hey, check it out. I'm finally back. I'm recovered and I'm ready to go. Today, we're going to be checking out something a little bit different from what I usually do. We're going to be taking a look at EA Sports WRC. I originally planned on naming this video Critical Damage just to describe my god-awful tree-wrecking driving style in rally cars. But you know what? EA threw me a curveball because they managed to break the entirety of career mode. So since that happened, we're going to be checking out all the features that are not career mode in this video. Basically, a shenanigans showcase. And to give you just a little bit of background on my personal experience with rally games, my first experience was actually with Dirt 2 on the Wii. I liked it, but quite honestly, it didn't really leave that big of an impression on me. But then when I got Dirt 3 on PC, that really opened my eyes to what's possible out of these games. And I absolutely loved that game. And I still do. My relationship with rally games kind of fell off after that. I played Dirt 4, don't really remember it too much. And literally, it's been a gap all the way up to this. So for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much the first rally game I've sat down and tried to play since Dirt 3. So today, we're just going to have some fun with it. First of all, I want to show you what we got going on here. The driver model is basically great value driver man. And you know what? Hang on. Let me let me adjust this. There we go, that's more appropriate. I'm driving the 21 for Wood Brothers reasons, and my co-driver is appropriately named Verbal Support. I suppose I'm gonna need a lot of him today. In the background there, you can see the pristine, what I've been calling high visibility red chrome paint scheme. And you see, unlike a high visibility jacket, which you wear so you don't get ran over, this car is painted high visibility red so that people witnessing it have the ability to get out of my way just in case I start barrel rolling over a hill that they just so happen to be standing on. And by the way, I should mention, I'm actually playing this with a controller. That's because my setup currently doesn't accommodate for using this mic with a steering wheel. However, I can tell you that I know how to flip one of these things regardless of whether I'm using a wheel or a controller, so I don't think it sacrifices any of the product. I did complete the entire rally school before I jumped into this, and let me tell you, I, ha I had quite the time. Was great. So like I said, we're going to be taking a look at all the features that are not called career. So let's start off with this game's equivalent of the lightning challenges that used to be in the NASCAR Thunder games with moments. So first of all, let's start with Audi's Asphalt Assault. Now, what's concerning here, a 5.9 mile stage. That's a lot of opportunities for me to throw this thing off course, and these cars are expensive. So let's see how it goes. All right, great value, driver man, and verbal supports debut. Also, ignore my driver's Muppet hands, which are going to be flying around everywhere because I play with maximum steering sensitivity. Okay. That was cool. Alright, just be patient with me. I'll get this figured out. Oh, that almost looked like I knew what I was doing. I thought that was a wall. This is a precarious situation to be in. All right, trust me, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. I merely stalled it. And that's because I forgot which binding was the clutch and which binding was the handbrake, but don't worry about it. I'm a professional. I've only fallen into a cliff multiple times. And again. All right, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm not going to really try to race, if you know what I mean. I'm going to try to just make it to the end and hope for the absolute best instead of trying to actually push the pace any. Keep it on the road. Yep, squiggling through there. Oh, yeah. The enemy of my existence is hairpins. Example that. At least I'd rather stall it than fall off the cliff. Stalling it might be embarrassing, but at least it isn't the end. Tree. I made it. Wow. See, that's what I love about these games. It's like when you when you finally make it. Oh my god, the the relief from it after having dodged death 500 times is remarkable. See, look, I did it. I actually did something. All right, we're doing this one a little bit out of chronological order, but we're going to go back to the 70s because I simply want to drive a Ford Escort. 
All right, here goes nothing. Slight left and turn, one right and slight right, 70. Oh, I like, I like the power in this thing. Oh, this thing's got good, good straightaway speed. Turn, right, square left. Wow. 30, turn, square right. <laughs> okay, thought I could cheat the chicane. All right, yeah, that one didn't go great, but I enjoyed it. I had so much fun the first time, I'll try this one again. There's a big jump. I gotta try not to die on this. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice, I think I actually know how to take jumps now. Almost stalled it. I didn't, though. It's about those minor improvements. Okay. This Ford really does what I need it to do. Because it made all its hay on the straights, because I, I couldn't get this thing through the corner to save my life. You know, when it comes to AI difficulty, I'm not really sure why they wanted to make the moments so easy, because I, I was really not knowing what I was doing on this stage, but yet I still won by 24 seconds. Uh, they, they might need to balance that just a little bit. Tasteful green water. All right, let's head forward to the 90s now to check out Colin McRae's famous Subaru. I've accidentally turned my windshield wipers on, but because it's a gravel stage, I might end up needing them. All right, a little bit of a jump. Another. Well, that was a bad idea. A little bit of left rear action right there. No harm, no foul. Whoa, that was a Jesus take the wheel moment. So was that. I'll take that out just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, trim that up for the next guy. Oh, I sure didn't know where I was going. Using all my best dirt track tricks of just fishtailing the rear end around so that if I do hit a wall, I hit it with either the left rear or the right rear, and it kind of straightens the front. All right, made it. You know, at least they make these things easy enough for people like me to do them. Fortunately, from the first stage, I somehow only got exhaust damage. I mean, I got some body damage, but that's that's just a given. I shouldn't even have to mention that. Oh, I'm mowing this guy's yard. Can I take out the stop sign? Nope. Can't take out the stop sign. Door's a little broke. That's just gonna add to the wind. A little bit of breeze in here, you know? Whoa! Door just failed. Yeah, so that door's just gonna keep doing that. Now it's not, it's completely gone. Huh. Gotta miss the trees, all right. There we go. Nice. That was fun. I, I really enjoyed those two stages. All right, let's do snow cone next. Need a little bit of snow racing in my life. There's no way this could go bad, right? I'm not going to wreck into someone's cabin. Oh! I'm... I'm going to live through this. Hang on. I'm back on. I'm going way too fast. Flipping again. Sure, corner cut. Did on my roof. I'm that good now. Yeah, I, I I don't know what I'm doing. Did it. That was fun. That's what recovery drives are made of. I mean, I might not have won, but the fact that I made it, that alone was a miracle. Look at this pole thing. I created a second. The power of multiplication. So anyway, after that phenomenal experience, I'm gonna try that one again. 50. Right to the crest. 30. Whoop. To the crest, half long. How that worked, I will not question it. There we go. Okay, that's a six minute, eight. Ah, 
I, I just had to do that. Imagine the Marshall's surprise seeing that happen. So you know something's gonna happen when you come off a jump at 91 miles an hour like that. That's never usually good. Alright, so the first impact was the roof hitting right where Verbal Support's head is, rather convenient, and then smacked it up against this tree, which must have some pretty deep and strong roots. Alright, I think I'm gonna do one more moment. Let's do Recovery Drive, checking out the modern Rally 1 Toyota. I did a good job at almost stalling it immediately. Oh, wait a second. Wait a minute. That's not where the track goes. Oop. Oh, house! Thank God they put a tree there. What did I just hit? I like how with the way I drive, I can barely tell if I'm on all three t All three. I can barely tell if I'm on all four tires or not. You're not supposed to just have three, but I usually do. Oh, I'm looking like a real professional now. Double stall. I'll find the road. One of these weeks. That cameraman was a little too close. Okay. That's a three minute, 32.8. What you got on your computer there? Wow, that looked good. I'm finally figuring out how to use a handbrake and actually connect it through a square corner. That one was just not knowing where the braking zone could have even been. But still, I'm starting to starting to kind of get a feel for this. Okay. Now that was nice. You see that guy's scared and surprised face? Oh man, he's seen something. So now that we've seen what Moments has to offer, I know what I'm going to dedicate the rest of this video to. We're going to build a custom Rally 1 car, and we're going to try to win a championship with it. Sounds like an expensive and unlikely goal, but it's worth trying. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build the worst, cheapest car imaginable. A Duotone engine, a Jing Shen differential, a 711 gearbox, a clutch from a and Xenon radiator, Zer suspension, Esto Perpetua brakes, and finally, the all-important loop exhaust. Alright, so we're calling this thing the Flip Master. I couldn't think of a more appropriate name. So we are now fully chromed. I like how down at the bottom left you can see that the chrome kind of breaks the way it renders. It's such a powerful chrome, it's at the edge of reality. Alright, so since career mode's basically broke, we're gonna be doing a bit of a quick play championship mode to see if the Flip Master has what it takes to be competitive as a Rally 1 car. I'm not very good at this, as you can tell. I have fun with it, but I'm by no means a professional, so we're gonna go with 80, and I'm probably gonna get the crap beat out of me in this championship, but still. So what I wanna do here is I wanna create a championship that's gonna be a good sample of this game, and really put the Flip Master to the test. Here's the idea, all the races are in winter, we're gonna start in Mexico, then go to the Central European Rally, head to Southern Asia to see what these sorts of plants look like in the winter, then head to Monte Carlo, and then some of the most harsh winter environments, so I don't know if the Flipmaster can make it all the way through this. I guess I have managed to build something pretty good. Well, these two are getting ready to start their rally here, and they will be hoping to get this first stage under their belts comfortably to settle them in for the day. You see, what's really disturbing about this stage is that 90% of the time, the next corner is just blind. You can't see it. Like that right there, absolutely terrifying corner. Okay, where am I going? Where am I going? I'm back somewhere. I know it's a little bit like cheating, but I need a slightly higher camera angle. Whoa! You ever cut a corner and ram a cactus at the same time? Honestly, with how cheap all the parts on this thing is, I don't even know how it's still running. Oh, that was cool. 
Where am I? 100% got lost. Oh no, water splash. I don't know if this, this engine can survive liquid. Somehow I made it out of the liquids, but the car's still running, although who knows for how long. Full speed. Whoa! I probably shouldn't be thrashing the engine like this, but it's fun to do. Also, I shouldn't be thrashing the whole car, but man, it's instinctual. It's like, oh, you step on the throttle, it just, it makes the noise. And the noise is good. Because it means speed. We're starting to get more warnings. Oh, hood's about to fall off. There it goes. Well, at least now it's easier to see what I'm doing. Late. Three left of the crest. That one didn't work so well. I got a flat. As long as I can keep it down to just one and not lose a second tire, I should be just about fine. I mean, it's still running pretty good for what it is and for how little of it's left. I'm starting to have a little bit of engine trouble. It's now the struggle to get above 40 miles an hour. We made it. We made it. And that's what's left of it. As you can see, I did great. That is last. <laughs> yeah, this car is screwed. There is no way this thing's gonna make it. Ooh, nice downhill segment. Makes, makes up for the engine problems. That's one way of getting through a water splash, is just completely decide not to even use it. Come on. Yeah, I think it's finally dead. Yeah, when the front wheels are doing that, I don't think there's much more going on. Well, with my current driving style, we managed to get basically one full stage out of it. I might have to refine that a little bit. Looks like this crew have settled nicely into their rhythm now, setting another solid time on this stage and holding their position in this event. Sure. It's just a little bit damaged. Just a little bit. I would recommend maybe not trying to breathe them fumes. Here we are. This crew are ready and raring for their first stage of the event. These two will be looking to set a fast but controlled time here to start the day off strongly. I'm telling you, this this thing with the high visibility red chrome, it looks good before I wreck it. All right, let's see how far the car can get this time without just absolutely being dead. Left, 60, ha! Huh. I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter how far over inspection time we go, because uh, I mean, we're not, we're really not running for the championship. We're just hoping that we can actually get to the finish of any of this. Now, the worst thing in the world are straightaways, because they're so inviting. You just get going way too fast, and then you end up flipping. Also, thank God for the fact that the trees, for the most part, on this stage are not right next to the road. I'm not sure if it looks like this from the perspective of a viewer, but this is me babying it. The other times where I would kill this thing was when I was pushing too hard, but now that I'm babying it, the car might actually survive. See that? That's smooth, conservative, easy, slick. That's what an engine sounds like when it's being babied. Oh yeah. Ha ha ha, we've done it. I finished. And I really didn't junk it up too much. Sixth place, not last. There has been a plethora of excitement and talent on show here, and as we now move into the final stage of the event, it could all still be to play for. So it's the night time and it's snowing. There's no way this could go poorly. Uh-huh. Man, everything is, is so slickery. Whoa, missed the pole. One false move right here, and I'm falling off a cliff. Well, where am I going? <laughs> now that was skill right there. I did it. We have no points. 
But I think, you know what, the goal of this six event championship is going to be hopefully a point. I'm going to sound like most Formula One drivers. I hope to score one point in my career. It's not every week you get to rally somewhere as tropical as this, is it? Rally Pacifico should be fun for you. It's a sandy and often muddy surface that can be quick one minute and technical the next. I flipped in a shakedown. They don't call it the flip master for nothing. Somehow, after flipping this thing, the only thing I damaged was the body. That's at least good. Could have been way worse. Well, the chrome's pretty shiny for right now, but it won't be like that in a matter of minutes. Look at that! At least in that split, I'm doing pretty good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Managed to not die. Oh man, I got that thing slowed down enough to where that was just a kiss. I think I've done it. Wow, I love Rally Pacifico. A shorter stage now, but one that is no less demanding on the cruise. Setting consistently fast times on stages such as these counts for a lot in the grand scheme of the event. All right, here we go again. I don't know how I'm going to live up to that last run. Wow. Almost nailed the side of the bridge there. Big jump. Yeah, this place is awesome. Ten seconds. Rally Pacifico. I just get it. Time to make it happen. I did that completely wrong, but I think I made up good time doing it. Alright, I didn't quite have enough to win. I did a pretty good job for my standards. Fifth place. Not bad at all. Look at that. Actually won something. Three teams there that fought the hardest and walk away having secured a place on the podium. From first to third, we have the scientists, Kat Suta and Robin Perra. I told you the Flipmaster has what it takes. At least I can say I've scored points. And in fact, I actually won an event. If we do nothing else, we can at least say that we did something. <laughs> Welcome to round four of the FIA World Rally Championship. We're here at a true WRC classic, the famous Rally Monte Carlo. Slight left, 50, six right to the crest, half long, or 80. Wow. Wow, that was fast. Man, hairpins for days. Oh, why are the signs so well mounted to where I can't even knock them over with the car going a hundred? Oh God, snow. And now ice. I'm trying to dip the tires off into the snow because it actually has more grip than the road right now. Oh God. Man, I almost won that. Almost is not enough, though. Second. You know what? I'll take it. For my standards, that's not bad. I probably shouldn't have flipped this car out of anger at the end of the last stage, because now I gotta live with that damage. Then again, on an ice stage... I'm not sure how much performance is gonna matter. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be a stage that we win. There went the hood. And the front bumper. We made it. We're back to critical damage on the car. Eighth position. We're doing pretty good. Time to see if I can limp this thing home. You know, I think the fact that I've got extreme engine damage is actually helping me a little bit because it limits the amount of slip that I'm getting on the ice, because I have basically no power. I'm pretty sure that if I bump the front end at all, I'm gonna absolutely destroy one of the front wheels. <laughs> so that adds even more pressure to this. Oh boy. Oh, this is scary. That's why it was scary. I did it! Towards the end there, it just kind of felt like I was falling off the mountain. I actually finished. I didn't think we were going to. Look at that, championship points! Ten of them! Welcome to the penultimate round of the FIA World Rally Championship. 
Rally Scandia will see our drivers traverse narrow single track roads running alongside frozen streams through the tightest of bridges and getting up close and personal to the trees that line these treacherous roads. We're in the deep snow now. No longer just ice on the roads. All right, this stage is kind of going to force me to drive a little smarter than I have before because the snow banks leave you with no margin for error at all. These are some rough roads. Oh, Jesus. I got a sneaking suspicion I'm going to fall into that lake. Crest 100. Slowing right to the jump 30. All right. I finished. That's really all this is about. You see, for me, rally racing is a game of death. And to truly win just means that you've survived. Tenth could have been worse. Almost a 20 mile stage. I doubt this car running by the time that we're done with it. Whoa, what was that, an avalanche? I just climbed over a stone. What have you done today? Lake. I think there's a little bit of damage to the front end after doing that. Man, I might be terrible at this, but I love stages like this. The sensation of speed with the trees all encompassing snow banks to your left and right. Slide right. And it really hits you, especially when you stop moving. This stuff really, really takes your full concentration. It's hard to actually talk while I'm doing this. Into small crest. We have a puncture. I think I just caused another diplomatic incident. I'm not sure if a car with this much damage should be going as fast as I'm making it go. Oh no! Well, that went amazingly. I'm still sixth in points, though. Welcome to the final round of the FIA World Rally Championship. This edition comes to you from the frozen and wonderful Rally Sweden. The stages are fast, flowing, and banked by deep snow. All right, so I'm going to devote full concentration to this event, and hopefully I'm going to be able to get through all three stages without destroying this thing to bits. Whoa, bank. Oh, I like this speed segment. I don't now. Look at that, I put it together. Yeah, actually won that stage. Alright, same strategy as last time. Gonna back down the pace just in an effort to stay on the road. Oh, we're making miracles happen right now. We made it! Man, these things are nerve-wracking, especially once they start to get to the end and realize, hey, I might not have actually screwed it up this time. We are now here at the final stage where it still can be all lost or won. One last endurance rally. 13.3 miles. 60. Why is that tree so solid? Okay. Made it. Sadly, this crew looked to have dropped some time and subsequently their position in the standings. I don't care because I finished. A sigh of relief and a place on the podium for these teams that get to enjoy a moment of celebration before doing this all over again. From first to third, we have Lappy, Breen and The Scientist. So I finished seventh in overall standings of this six event championship. So nowhere near last. And I even got an event win. We did pretty good, especially for our first outing in that little crap wagon thing we built. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? So I guess for right now, that pretty much does it. I will say this, the absolute core gameplay of this game is phenomenal. I'm obviously terrible at this, but that doesn't mean I can't like it and have fun. And to give you my personal opinion of this game, I'm in love with the physics model. Most of the features are actually quite enjoyable as well. Uh, really, the only complaint is, you know, EA style stuff. The career mode is basically broke at this present moment. The strange micro transactions that kind of feel unnecessary, but still they're just there as a bit of a distraction. The code Codemasters part of the game, that's awesome. The EA part of the game is the EA part of the game. So it's it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You have to separate one half from the other. But once they get the career mode thing figured out, I would recommend picking this game up. It's it's a good time, even if you don't know what you're doing. If you're like me and you just end up wrecking into stuff, honestly, you'll have a smile on your face when you're doing it. 
And so now I'd like to take a moment and thank each and every one of my channel supporters. Your support is incredibly appreciated. And I really just want to say to all my viewers, thank you. Seriously, you, you make this all worth it. And uh, I really couldn't do it without you. And so I hope you enjoyed today's video. A little bit of a diversion from the norm, and while I might be terrible at rally games, I really do love them. There's just a certain level of enjoyment you get from whipping one of these things around. And to close this off, thanks for making this year incredible, and I'll be seeing you in 2024.